Rupes, an unofficial history. So Rupes are actually a very old brand starting just two years after the close of World War II, 1947 actually, in uh, Milan, in Italy. So they're based out of Vermezzo. Um, the name actually is an acronym. So forgive me here, it's an Italian acronym. Uh, it stands for Realizzazioni Utensili Pneumatici Elettrici Speciali, which translates to uh, Speciality Electric and Pneumatic Power Tools. Um, so it makes sense in that way, but uh, Rupes, particularly with the, the role of the R, is, uh, is how they're known nowadays. So after their launch in 1947, as a family firm, they tried to develop, they tried to grow, uh, and their early success came just four years later in 1951, just into 1952, uh, with the launch of the 123 Stork model. So this was a, a flatbed sander. Um, but it's really gained them an international success, and it catapulted the company on. They had a strong focus from the outset based on quality, innovation, and safety for the end user, which, you know, certainly going back... 70 odd years you know health and safety isn't what it is now um, but it's good to see a company take serious inroads into that which led to their next big innovation and this was in 1961 uh, or so when they launched the tp and pc drill systems um, the innovation with this is it was the world's first uh, power tool made with a technical polymer or for want of a better way to put it plastic now this plastic was actually supplied to them by the uh, buyer company, uh, so still a large company today. Um, but this added uh, a, a reduction in production costs, uh, an extra safety because uh, you know using a metal-bodied power tool now changing into the plastic added even more insulation between the users. So again, part of their innovation uh, it really pushed them forward. In 1968, just seven years later, they launched the world's first electric random orbital sander. And that was called the BR-8. So you get a feel for this history as we go. Everything that Rupes seems to do is always at the forefront of what they want to do. You know, they really are an innovator, not a follower. Um, and they do notice trends and they cater to that for sure. Um, but a big part of what they do as a company is really based around trying to be a global leader in what they do. In 1969, this leads them to add dust removal into all of their sanders. So again, going back to the user safety, you know, no one wants a lung full of dust. Rupes noticed that and they really went with that as well. 1974 saw the first palm sander launched by them. That was called the LE7. As a note on the uh, names of all these models, and this is something I spoke with uh, Francesco at uh, Rupes directly about, I said, what do they mean? And he said, oftentimes you'll have the number, for example, you know, a lot of you will be familiar with, say, the Bigfoot machines. The number is in relation to either the throw of that machine or the size of the backing plate. But the initial letters, they really just are a designation given at the factory that don't mean anything. So uh, to save you all pointlessly Googling, which is something I did for a long time, um, that, don't look into it. Uh, 1985 saw them launching a new vacuum system. Now this resulted in what was known as the energy car. So a mobile trolley uh, where your sander vacuum, everything was built in. So really to make uh, life easier for people sanding in automotive, things like that, um, but with that added safety of the vacuum there as well. Um, and really they continue to innovate throughout those uh, late part of the 20th century. As we get into the 21st century in 2000, they now launch a fully automated assembly line for their electric motors. So a massive step forward for the company in that they're now reliant solely on themselves. They have direct control over their own quality control with the motors. Um, and it's something that has been a big strong point of reliability with them always. And this really ensures that. In 2008, they launched the LHR150. Now, this had a 10 millimeter throw, uh, and this is how a lot of you guys will know uh, Rupes at this point is as polishing machine manufacturers. Uh, and this inv uh, innovation at the time with the 10 millimeter throw was the largest throw on this type of machine for this application, for this market. Um, and to give some context, uh, the Porter cable machine, which was very popular at that time, had an 8 millimeter throw, uh, this one with a 25% increase on that. And really, they noticed that that as a market had. Uh, potential. So they continued to innovate into 2010. They launched then the Bigfoot brand uh, and they trade under that the 15 and 21 mil 
uh, orbit machines were launched uh, in 2015 they go the other way and they bring in the hybrid uh, machine as well so with these big throw machines really great for big panels they notice that the smaller and intricate areas do need some care as well and they launch the hybrid uh, both long and short neck versions 2015 as a company has really grown at this point they actually purchased the cyclo toolmakers company based out of colorado now the reason for that uh, really is the american market started to boom for rupes at this time uh, and they noticed that and as a company goes they have uh, four production sites in milan they have one in germany one in the netherlands and they noticed that the uh, u.s market really did need something there so they purchased cyclo uh, you know, they do make uh, their own polishing machines, but also then they used that site that they bought to build the Rupes Center in America. So they took advantage of that purchase, the land that came with it as well. Um, in 2013, part of uh, them really starting to establish in America just two years before they bought the Cyclo, uh, they do open the first ever auth uh, authorized training center in the world, which is actually esoteric detailing. So as a little fact for you guys, they were the first uh, in the world. So a real big accolade for them. And I know they do fantastic work. In amongst all of this as well, Rupes do also have uh, their consumables line. So pads, polishes, compounds, uh, and general car cleaning materials. Now with this, they seem to have just crept into the, the, the range over the years. So no specific dates pinned down for those. Rupes do mention quite interestingly on their website, part of their strengths, uh, is that they have a um, arrangement, they, they word it as a consolidated partner with 3M. Now, I don't know whether 3M are the source for these uh, compounds and, and so on, but if they are, it gives them a real good foothold, much like the Maguire's history, that 3M can cater to a worldwide market, really, at a moment's notice. And Rupe has carried that into to the manufacture of their tools as well. Um, they don't manufacture to build stock, they run what is uh, generally considered more of an efficient approach, which is uh, just on time manufacturing approach. So that means that if you went and ordered 10,000 machines, they wouldn't take them off a shelf. They would make them and deliver them in. So everything's made to that customer specification, well, that customer's order uh, and delivered it in just in time. And it gives them a real direct control over what they do uh, and shows really how they've got to be where they are today. At this point, they have 60 agents around the world, 70 authorized uh, distributors around the world, uh, and this all coming from a family-owned business founded in 1947, which is still to this day owned by that family. So a fantastic success story, one of detailing's real innovative uh, type of companies, uh, and I'm excited to see what they do next. That's the Rupes history. If there's a history you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments below and I'll get that researched. If you've liked this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Uh, a share, a comment, a like, all goes a long way. Uh, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.